Hosea. Hosea chapter 6. Now where do you find Hosea? Go to the middle of your Bible and that will put you somewhere near Psalms. Go through Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel. You'll hit Daniel. And then right after Daniel is the book of Hosea. I'm going to work today from Hosea chapter 6, verses 1 through 3. A very important scripture. Hosea 6, verse 1. Come, let us return to the Lord, for he has torn that he may heal us. He has stricken, and he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up, that we may live before him. Let us, let us know, let us press on to know the Lord. His going forth is sure as the dawn. He will come to us as the showers, as the spring rains that water the earth. So we're going to focus today on verse 2, which says, After two days, he will revive us on the third day. He will raise us up. Now listen for the third day. Now turn over now to Matthew chapter 16. In Matthew chapter 16, I'll start reading from verse 21. Now we've heard this before, and we're going to hear it again, this wonderful passage from Matthew 16, starting with verse 21. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders, and chief priests, and scribes, and be killed. And on the third day, be raised. Peter uh, took him and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid, Lord, this will never happen to you. But Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block, a hindrance to me. You are not thinking the thoughts of God, but the thoughts of man. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Now, I want to start out today with a little story that uh, happened around 1971 in Chapel Hill. Now, I, I grew up, I grew up in Chapel Hill. My mom, after my parents got divorced, uh, my dad stayed in San Diego and my mother came back to Chapel Hill to go to college there. And during the time, that was in 67, and during the time that we were there, she met and married a professor at the college. And we moved into his big house. Now, his name was Walter, and he had parties. Big, big parties. And when I was growing up, everybody who was anybody in Chapel Hill came to those parties we had there at that house. And my mama would routinely serve supper to 30 or 40 people at a, at a shot. We had dinner parties. We had a dinner party one night, 71. I remember it real well because my mom served spaghetti and meatballs, okay? Big old pot of spaghetti and, and meatballs there. And, I, and we did not, just for the record, we did not use paper plates because paper plates were wasteful. Do you remember that? Do you remember when they were wasteful? We wouldn't use them because they were wasteful. So we had regular plates, and I went and I got a plate of spaghetti, meatballs, and I, 
And I was walking with my spaghetti and meatballs to we're going to sit down in the living room, you know, find some spot and sit and eat. And I'm carrying the spaghetti and I'm looking at the spaghetti while I'm carrying it. And sure enough, you know, the spaghetti wants to go this way a little bit, right? So if it goes this way, I have to pleat back a little bit, you know, and it went that way. And, and I'm carrying the spaghetti and I'm walking along. And do you know the tiniest little bit of spaghetti? I mean, one little spaghetti it went off the side of that plate. And do you know what it did? It grabbed hold of all the rest of the spaghetti and the whole thing just went right on the floor. Splat! Now my mom, she got upset. She got very upset because she was trying to serve dinner to 40 people at the same time. And I remember a student, a young guy, and he sees that, and he just says to me, he says, I used to work in a restaurant, and that kind of thing happened all the time. I'm going to show you how to clean it up. That's what he said. I'm going to show you how to clean that up. Years later, I, I knew a, a maintenance lady at the college who, who told me, and I remember her words because they're so true. She says, hey, Lord, there's two kind of people in the world. Them what makes the mess and them what cleans it up. <laughs> and, and if you really think about it, think about us. We are, generally speaking, the ones that clean it up. Now, it's gonna happen. You're gonna drop the spaghetti or the chili. <laughs> it, it, it's gonna happen, okay? It's gonna happen. Now, the point is this. It, it happens in little ways little personal catastrophes that occur, and it happens in really big ways. We, we get troubles that come upon us in our lives, and they can be big troubles. The point is, the point of faith is getting through it. And I'm going to offer you today a formula from the scripture about day one, Day two and day three. Just remember, day one, well, day one is the day of the splat. Day one is the day of, well, there it is. Day two, back off a little bit and just wait. In faith, a little bit. Day three. Day three. On the third day, he, what? he rose from the dead. Amen. That's what we're going to look at today. I, I find this scripture, and, and the Hosea scripture is vital. This is a scripture you need to underline. This is a scripture you need to focus on. And keep in your heart. And you need to put faith into this scripture. It says, come, let us return to the Lord. He has torn. Our lives get torn up. He is torn. It happens. That he may heal us. You see... It, it's about being healed. Healed in the body, healed in the mind, healed in the spirit, in faith. It's about us growing into God, growing into the eternal, into life eternal. He has torn that he may heal us. He has stricken. That means that he's struck, you know, it happens. We, we drop things, we break things. And, and some of the stuff that gets dropped and broken 
breaks our heart. It happens. He will bind us up. That's the promise of God. Gonna go through terrible troubles, but he will bind us up, bring us together again. After two days, he will revive us. The third day, he will raise us up. The third day, he will raise us up. So the catastrophe, the disaster, the trouble, the thing that happens, that's day one. When day one happens, all we can do is pick up the pieces. Just pick up the pieces. That's why, oh goodness gracious, I'm here, hold on here, hold on, I gotta go back, just let me, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, hold on. There we go. <laughs> okay, day one. This is what you got on day one, right here. I'll pick up the pieces. What a wonderful invention. I'd like to know who invented this, because by golly, it works. There you go. So, you see, what, what you have to do, it, it, it's not so much what happens, it's with the faith, the hope, and the love that you get what you need, and you put it back together again. Day one, day one, day two, day two, all you do is wait. Because to get after day one, you got to heal. You got to take some time and let things get put back together again. And the harder thing you've been through, the longer it takes. But you let that day two is the day of waiting. The day of waiting. And then comes day three. What happened? Always remember. On the third day, he rose from the dead. That is what happens. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up. Now, Jesus... All the years and centuries later after Hosea, Jesus took that promise. That's where it says, on the third day. He took that promise, he embodied it, he lived it, he walked it. Literally, he took that promise to himself completely. And so... It, it starts out, I'll just start right with verse 21 in Matthew 16. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must. And I've spoken many times about must. It had to happen. It had to happen. And, 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 and knowing that it had to happen is, is a great, great thing for acceptance. That you can accept that it happens. Because if you can't accept, you're gonna fight. And you can fight as much as you want. But fighting just leads to more fighting. Acceptance leads to healing. He showed his disciples that he had to go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders, chief priests, and scribes, and be killed. Had to happen. And on the third day be raised. There's that third day. You see, the second day is the day of waiting. The third day is the day of resurrection. It's the day of returning and realizing that life goes on that there is healing there is new light and new life and we will live on and that goes beyond these bodies that goes to these souls the real us in eternity 
we will all go on. So we get to that third day, that day of resurrection, that day of new life, that day of celebration, because the blessings of God are there for us. Amen. Let me uh, invite 